This day is about to be epic and you're coming along with me. Welcome to Velocity Invitational, where this is about to be unveiled, the Ford GT Mark IV. And straight after, I find myself lucky enough to hop into the passenger seat for an experience and a ride on board. Hi guys, I'm Shmi, hello and welcome back to the channel. We're here at Sonoma Raceway. We're gonna take a first look at the livery of the Mark IV, the ultimate final iteration of the third generation GT. And as an owner of a new Ford GT, I'm really excited to see what happens when you throw out the rule book, when you make the extended, even crazier, even more powerful version of this iconic supercar. So let's check out the covers being pulled back and then it's gonna be time to hop on board and go find out what it's like. We are surrounded by the most legendary cars at this event, all McLaren F1, CLK GTR, 911 GT1, there's a 250 GTO, but we're here with Ford Performance. This is, of course, the 2022 Heritage Ford GT. This is a tribute to the original 1964 prototype. You've got this very dark, almost black, navy blue paint, the exposed carbon stripe, and the beige paintwork around the bodywork. One of the final of the different Heritage specials, which pay tribute to the history of the GT, which is what this does as well to the other side because over here we have the Mark II. Now I've actually been lucky to go out at Laguna Seca in a Ford GT Mark II. This is much more closely representative to the road car, the road body shape wheelbase, whereas the Mark IV has changed things a notch. This thing, I mean, just look at it. These cars are so cool, so iconic, so distinct, but I think it's time to see the Mark IV being unveiled and get into the detail before I'm hopping inside it. It's about to be time and the GTLM has arrived. The crowd is all around us, but it's about to be the unveiling of the Mark IV. This represents the ultimate version of the Ford GT track day version. Uh, we have the Mark II over here. Mark IV actually pays tribute to the 67 GT 40 Mark IV that won Le Mans in 1967. There it is, the Ford GT Mark IV in its final specification. Look at this. Elongated wheelbase, radical aero, two and a half thousand pounds of downforce at 150 miles an hour. Well over 800 horsepower, different driving modes, and a lot more we can talk on, dive into shortly. Bad, eh? Yeah, that's a good right. reception. Um, I'm going to be jumping Maxwell, out uh, just to give with Scott history. very shortly to go find out about it. Oh, that made me jump. GTMF. These are the course cars that, of course, race the 24 hours of Le Mans. Listen to that. Boost V6, the crowd has settled a touch, so let's have a quick walk around of the car I'm about to go in, the GT Mark IV. Look at this thing, look at the exposed carbon replacement headlight setup, obviously full thoroughbred race car, but unrestricted. This elongated chassis akin to the 1967 Ford GT Mark IV. This is a modern day tribute to that car that was successful back in 1967, hence limited to only 67 cars in total. Come round towards the back, of course, gone the traditional hydraulic wing that you normally have on the road cars, the fixed gigantic spoiler sticking out well over the back of the car, the exhaust tailpipes, which we're going to hear some of very shortly. But look at all of these openings in the bodywork, obviously the car being prepped, being set up. GT Mark IV will have a better look at the interior in a moment or two when out there on the track. These smaller doors that open upwards and outwards. This is taking the Mark II and turning it even further. Presented here in the carbon from this new livery, the final production specification. They've been telling us there are three different driving modes. The first mode, 500 horsepower, second, 700, and the third, stage three, all the way up to 800 horsepower from 3.5 liter twin turbocharged EcoBoost V6. Obviously, mid rear mounted in the Ford GT. Have a look at this stepping in. Actually, quite different to the road car, much narrower sill, obviously, chopping everything away. Built in cage. Look at this thing. There are some familiarities to shape of the dashboard. Hey, you've got air conditioning in here. The seats are really snug right next to one another. Built in telemetry system, obviously, full bucket seats right up to the edge of the bodywork, the carbon fiber monocoque that you have for this car and a tiny window. In fact, when I climb in here in a moment, it's probably gonna be quite embarrassing. We'll see how that goes. It is time for this thing to head down to the pit lane, about to be the GT Mark IV session. Of course, pop down for now. We're gonna follow it and go get ready to jump in. <laughs> 
The car has just gone straight out, doing a few warm-up laps, a couple of passengers for some hot laps during the lunch break here at Sonoma Raceway. I've never been around this circuit before, and I'm about to do it in the passenger seat of the new GT Mark IV. I'm not entirely sure how this is gonna go, but this opportunity is too special to pass up. So I need to grab my helmet. I think it's just coming past. Are they doing a run or do they have to pull straight back in? They're warming up tires at the moment. They come straight back into the pit lane. And I guess, oh my gosh, look at that. Look at that. That's nuts. That's absolutely nuts. Um, all right, wish me luck. All right, here we are. We're starting to get uh, just a bit of heat in the tire so I can start to push a little. Awesome, here we are then. Yeah. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh man. <laughs> well, you feel that power. You feel the go. <laughs> I've just got straight out of the car, obviously exhausted, because it's quite a workout being in the passenger seat. I sat now, heads next to the LMs there. Oh, 
God, listen to those. But I tell you what's frustrating. When I pulled in, I realized these cameras weren't on. And at this moment in time, I don't know when they turned off or why they turned off. I hope that they filmed enough that you guys have been able to come along for that because I wasn't expecting that level of performance. I mean, just look at those things over there. I wasn't expecting that much. The acceleration, to be honest. They're off. Out they go. I mean, don't get me wrong, they're ridiculous cars in any form, but the whole, like that acceleration, that braking, that G-force is a massive step up even beyond Mark II. I mean, regular GT to Mark II is obviously an impressive track car to begin with. And then this is like, I need a few more minutes to gather some more thoughts. Time for the Starline photo. That is ridiculously cool. I love it. Sound as they go past. They arrive back here, and you know what? This collaboration all the way through, Multimatic and Ford Performance. Making the GTs, the story behind the GT, everything that's led up to where we are now with this, the ultimate final rendition, the last version of the third generation of the Ford GTs, or GT40, first gen GT, second gen GT, technically. I mean, look at it. The blue paintwork, the red, white, blue theme, livery design. And now I can tell you the passenger experience that I've had in this, the tiny little doors that open up like that, cutaways in the bodywork, obviously running on slick tires. I mean, it's a force to be reckoned with, this thing. It's an absolute force to be reckoned with the exposed carbon under the livery over the front. Obviously full carbon bodywork, full carbon fiber cage, full race spec, various adjustable settings, controls, functions within it as well. We're back then, Scott. Thank you so much for that. My pleasure. That experience. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's taken me a bit of time. You've been excited. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. taken me a little bit of time to, to get my head around. Yeah what we've just taken in. Of course, you're a development driver with Multimatic. Yep. You have many years of experience and you've been on this project from the start. Since the start, yeah, yeah. Like, what, what's it like? Talk us through a little bit more about what it's like coming up with a car like this, working on a car like this. Yeah, I mean, it's a big team, right? It's not just about me. I'm the, sort of the last guy that touches it in the, in the chain of command. But um, we started off with a good base because we had the Mark II to go from. So it was an upgrade from the Mark II. Um, which was a fantastic car. So we started with a fantastic car, yeah. and we just made it better. So um, the Id ideally, we want a faster car. Everybody wants a faster car. We wanted to lose some weight off the Mark II, which we did, add downforce, add power, all the things a driver wants. And this is the, the finished part, the end of that. The suspension is particularly clever. Yeah. The system in here. The ASV, the, the active dampers. Yeah. Which. Really, what it's doing, it, it knows in advance the bumps, the curbs, the, the grip levels. You can drive it passively, which is traditionally with the shocks, or you can use active suspension. And even in the active mode, there's five different modes of active. So you can go quite gentle, or if you want a more aggressive front end, a little more nose, you can crank it up. And it, so it really, you can adjust it to the driver feel, the driver preference. Now, driving stages, we were running in stage two, I believe. Engine mode two. So we started in one on the outlaw. What we're struggling with here is it's a short run on cold tires, so every lap the car's getting better. So I think I went to mode two quite quickly, um, and I left it in mode two. Mode two is 700 horsepower, mode one is five. Mode three is 800, didn't do that here. This is a pretty tight, twisty track, so you can't really take advantage of it anyways. And it makes it a little more difficult getting out of corners because it's an extra 100 horsepower. Yeah, yeah. Seven, it's another 10, 15 percent of horsepower. It's a big step up. Yeah. yeah. Can we can we take a look inside uh, absolutely, quickly yeah. and have a more of a glimpse at your controls? There's a lot to look at, so you you can you can easily get confused by the dash, or at least I do. <laughs> a lot of buttons, and, so but everything is in your control. I mean, whether it's traction control, ABS, um, this has is where your engine modes are. You've got your e-pass for the steering, 
Um, you got auto shift or up shift, like yeah. auto shift shifts for you, basically automatic at peak yeah. revs. Um, your dash obviously shows you RPM, your gear, traditional things, your tire pressure as you go, so you know when your tires are getting up to proper yeah. pressure. Um, you name it, fuel, just what you normally say. You also have your cameras. We don't have any mirrors on the car, your mirrors are the cameras. Yeah, it makes so sense. So we have coming out on both sides and, and directly out the back. So there's a lot to look at there. Um, you, the best thing to do is you memorize the wheel, the steering yeah, wheel, yeah. before you go out because <laughs> yeah. doing it at 300 kilometers an hour is not the time to <laughs> figure out what button should I be hitting. So. Well, what's this, with this level of downforce, what's it like driving this at, at 300 k's? What, what are you... Well, I mean, that's the amazing thing. At 300 kilometers with the uh, downforce, 2,400 pounds is the quote number at 150 miles an hour. So yeah. at, at uh, faster than that, close to 200 miles an hour, you're, the downforce numbers are just increasing. It's incredibly solid. Anyone who's raced, uh, you know, a prototype race car or a formula car uh, in the upper formulas will understand when I say it feels stuck to the ground in a straight line. It, uh, so it almost kills the sensation of speed. You can be going 300 kilometers, but it feels very solid because it's not floating. Yeah. It's just pinned to the ground. I it's mean, not until you get to a braking area and you go, holy smokes, I got it. Yeah, I yeah. got to start slowing down. I mean, the, the interesting thing is those kind of numbers. Yeah. It's one of that that theoretical, if you're driving at 200 miles an hour, yeah, can you probably drive upside, upside down. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm not going to be the one who tries no. that. So, some young kid can do that for me. So. <laughs> You'll stick, stick to, to taking it around the track and making the most of it. Yeah. Well, this was an absolutely fantastic experience. Thank you so much. Um, Really appreciate I'm glad it. Glad you enjoyed it. You didn't scream too loud. No, no. I could barely hear you. Just yeah. along for the ride, enjoying yeah. it. Thank you. My pleasure. This actually takes me back a bit to 2015, January 2015, when the wraps came off the new Ford GT. I was at the North American International Auto Show in Detroit, and I tell you what, from that moment on, I just fell in love with this car instantly. The design, the story, linking back to the win in 1966, the Ford versus Ferrari, Le Mans 66, the battle, I'm sure you're familiar with that. Henry Ford, Enzo Ferrari, and Ford really wanting to go and win, to take an outright victory. In fact, in 65, things didn't work so well. In 66, they did have the top step, the middle step, and the bottom step of the podium, and that carried on through 67, 68, and 69, but it was in 67 that they went from the original Ford GT to the Mark IV. The Mark IV being the longer car built to FIA Appendix J specifications, the new requirements effectively, but also being a little bit more stable, having a seven litre engine, double what you have now, but 550 horsepower as opposed to the 800 horsepower. So to link this through again, the Mark IIs and the Mark IVs, to link them back to the original GT40s, and especially with this elongated wheelbase, the lightweight materials that are used. The GT40 Mark IV was the first honeycomb structure as well. This has similar technologies being integrated into it as well now. Gosh, there are some crazy cars. Obviously, it's very loud here, but I've always been mind blown by the story behind the Ford GT. It's one of the many reasons my car is so special to me. It might not be the fastest car out there. It's very expensive for what it is also, but it's the fact that it was built for a reason. It was built to go back and race again in 2016 at the 50th anniversary of the famous win at Le Mans, to go back to the Circuit de la Sar and to take the top step of the podium again. It was, I think we can say, a loss leading product for Ford. It was a product that cost an extortionate amount of money, a whole project that cost an extortionate amount of money. And that's why also you have the different heritage editions that have come as well, that link and pay tribute to those earlier cars. Obviously GTs have been in huge demand since the day that they were introduced. It sounds amazing here. This is like we've gone back to the 60s or 70s and just the sounds of all of the cars are, that are around. This being the 2022, so the 2016 linked to the 66, the 17 to the 67, the 18 to the 68, the 19 to the 69, and then a few other heritage editions as well. But this is really the icing on the cake because the Mark IV GT40 was the final iteration. It was the final special version. This is that for the new GT. Only 67 cars. They are $1.7 million, excluding taxes each. That's obviously quite a hefty price tag, about one and a half million pounds. But what it is, is a true ultimate track toy representation of what Ford Performance can do, what they've been able to achieve, what the GT story has been about all the way through. And that, today, to experience myself in the passenger seat, has been both breathtaking in terms of acceleration, significantly faster even in the 700 horsepower map than I expected when it gets on the throttle. And I felt that Scott was really building up to that. It pulls and pulls and pulls, obviously saving hundreds of kilos, many hundreds of pounds but just being stuck completely to the tarmac, 
slick tyres for early power, loads of grip through the corners, um, an early, I should say, grip to accelerate away. But everything about it, you know, I expected amazing brakes. I knew that was going to happen. I knew the CCMRs, the carbon carbon brakes, were going to be perfectly on on point. It's just, it's just a wild thing. It's a wild thing. And here at Velocity Invitational, to see the car in its finished form. A year ago, we saw renders. We saw an example of what it was going to be. But this is it here. This is it here now. And they've taken, as Scott said, that Mark II platform, and they've just pushed the boundaries with it to make the ultimate. Look at this. Ferrari 250 GTO just goes past. I apologize that we're filming a Ford video and I just got distracted for a Ferrari, but that is a GTO. Hopefully, we can make an exception which obviously back in the 60s, it was GTOs in the early 60s, and those were part of the reason why the GT40 existed. The GT40 existed to come and knock Ferrari off their throne in the early 60s. They dominated everything. They dominated absolutely everything. Enzo wouldn't sell to Henry, and here we are. GT40s began, and without that, these wouldn't be here now. What a great story, what a moment. I love that kind of thing. Oh, today has been so cool here at Velocity Invitational. What I love about this, is that we've got an endless stream of legendary cars just going past one after another, Alphas, Ferraris, just constant. And yet we also have the modern supercars and hypercars. There's a paddock just behind with the Zonda Revolution, Huayra BC, um, Pinaferina Batista, My Zenvo TSRS. And of course, it's been today here with Ford, with Ford Performance, with the GTs, and my mind is blown. First time here at Velocity Invitational. This feels like a Goodwood Festival speed revival, like just lots of cool stuff, lots of great people, lots of amazing things going on. And the beautiful weather, of course, being out here in California in the United States. So a big thanks to everybody here at Ford Performance. A big thanks for their hospitality, the opportunity to jump in the car with Scott earlier today and to just be able to bring you along to share what this experience has been like as well, because honestly, took my breath away. Really very, very impressive. Quicker than I expected. Probably equivalent to expectations in terms of the ultimate iteration of the Ford GT platform, but so much fun as well to come out and just, just soak it all up. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your support, but that's it for this time, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.